Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. So today I'm going to be doing my January wrap up part one. Generally I don't do parts for my wrap ups because I usually don't have quite as much to talk about, but January is a bit of an unusual month for me. It tends to be like my higher reading month. Last year in January I read 12 books. Um, as of right now I have 11 books finished, but I know for sure I'm going to finish a 12th because I'm almost done with one. My goal is to talk about some of the books today and then I will talk about the rest of the books next week just so that way it's easier on me <laughs> and it's just easier on you guys as well. You don't have to deal with a 30 minute video of me talking about books. So I'm going to just jump right into it. Usually I do sort of like a video wrap up but I didn't really do that many videos this month that weren't like TBRs for readathons, which is part of the reason why I've read so much this month. I think the only video I did that wasn't related to a readathon was my winter book haul, so if you haven't checked that out already, check that out. So the first week of January was Bout of Books, and so I'm not going to talk about the books that I already talked about in my Bout of Books wrap up. I'm going to go ahead and link to that in the card so that way if you are interested in any of these books, you can go check out that video. So the books that I read in the order that I am holding them, which is basically size order, um, is The Clothing of Books by Jhumpa Lahiri. This is basically like a little essay collection about book covers and Jhumpa Lahiri's relationship with book covers, how she views them as an author and a reader and just their whole functionality. Then there is Quesadillas by Juan Pablo Villalobos who is a Mexican author and this was translated into English by Rosalind Harvey. This is sort of like a satirical novel about life in Mexico and so if you're someone who is looking for works in translation, Juan Pablo Villalobos is fantastic to pick up. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of satire, so I only give it a 3 out of 5 stars, but I think that if, especially if you are a fan of satire, you should definitely pick this up. Then I read The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. This one I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. If you are someone who likes contemporary fiction, I definitely recommend this. Um, it is a little bit schmoopy, like there is a romantic storyline that's happening in here, but I think that Nicola Yoon does a fantastic job of making sure that it's not too ridiculous, and she weaves in a lot of great storylines about race and immigration and growing up in the United States and all of this different stuff. And then I read Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. This one I gave a 3 out of 5 stars to. Um, I know a lot of people like love this book so much and I can definitely see it but it didn't really quite resonate with me in that way. But I still think it's a really fun read. It's super quick even though it's massive. I read this in like two days I think or three days maybe. But it's a super fast read. It's such a compelling story. There's so much more depth in here than you would expect and I definitely did not see the ending coming whatsoever. It's a total surprise. So the next book that I finished after about a books was Cannery Row by John Steinbeck. I have read Of Mice and Men when I was in high school and then I read East of Eden I believe in 2014 and I absolutely adored it. I love John Steinbeck's writing and so I picked up Cannery Row and it was just as beautiful. His writing is just fantastic. The way that he creates characters is just fantastic. He creates such great complex characters. Um, there's always so much more happening than you think there are. So this is basically like a general story following a variety of characters in this town. There is Lee Chong who runs the grocery store. There is Doc who is basically like a scientist. And then there is Henry who is this not so smart guy in town who just wants to do well but never really seems to quite make the best decisions and so you're just following this like cast of characters as they are living in this town and it's just so endearing. John Steinbeck does a fantastic job of sort of like painting a scene for you. If you're someone who has read Of Mice and Men and don't know quite where to go next and you're might be intimidated by East of Eden or like Grapes of Wrath, I would highly highly recommend this one. It's really fantastic. This is also a book that don't expect to rush through. I don't think you should really rush John Steinbeck's books because the writing is so just like lyrical and like descriptive in a way that I don't really see a lot. Personally when I'm reading his books I like force myself to slow down and really absorb the words that he's using because it's just so meticulously chosen like you can tell yeah you don't want to rush through books like this but it's just so so well done I gave it a four out of five stars. The next book that I finished was A Lucky Boy. This is a new release that just came out in January and I was able to get an art copy of this through Edelweiss. In this book you are following two different storylines. In one storyline you are following this character named Solimar who just turned 18 years old. She lives in this tiny little town in Mexico and she decides that she wants to illegally cross the border into the United States and join her cousin who's living in California. So you are following her 
perilous journey into the United States. It's really horrific, some of the things that are happening. Um, when she turns up on her cousin's doorstep, it turns out that she is actually pregnant. And then on the other storyline, there is Kavya Reddy, who I believe is an Indian American like second generation character. Um, she is married to this guy who works at a tech company that's basically like a Google type situation. They live in like the Berkeley area and they just have to deal with like the pressures of their parents to lead this sort of like perfect life. Um, they've been married for a while and they don't have any kids and so you are just like following these two characters as they're progressing along and then obviously eventually their storylines cross but even though you think you know how the storylines are going to cross, you still don't really completely know how the storylines are going to cross. This was a really interesting story. I think that I would recommend this book if only because of honest brutality of Solimar's storyline, especially the parts of her coming into the United States. Um, tr major trigger warning for this book if you have issues with assault or anything along those lines because this book is, does not sugarcoat it whatsoever. But I think that this is also a really interesting commentary on family life and expectations and children and even just illegal immigration and families who get separated and a lot of really complicated topics. It's difficult to talk about this book because I don't want to give too much of the storyline away but I definitely think that this is a great book for like book clubs or great books for like discussions because the author of this book doesn't make any sort of of like judgments on the characters like she presents basically both storylines as completely valid choices and she doesn't make either of them out to be villains or either of them out to be heroes or heroines she just presents them as they are and it's like up to you as a reader to just choose and I felt like as a reader personally I couldn't really choose like you could see the val validity in everything that was happening and it was hard to fully agree or fully disagree with any of it so I just thought it was really well done for that so yeah if you are looking for a story that deals with immigration or illegal immigration or family life or anything along those lines, this is definitely a book worth checking out. And then the next book that I finished was News of the World by Paulette Giles. This was a book that I believe was shortlisted for the National Book Award. It's a really short book, it's only about 200 pages long. It's historical fiction and takes place uh, shortly after the American Civil War is over in Texas. There is this man named Captain Jefferson Kyle Kidd who travels throughout the state of Texas as a newsreader. So basically during that time since there wasn't like televisions and newspapers from like outside of your local town weren't easily accessible. He would gather like national and international newspapers and just read them to crowds and like people would pay a quarter to get into the area and it would, that would be like their entertainment for the evening. Um, so while he's on his travels he come across these black men who have in their possession this young girl who was captured by Native Americans when she was very young um, and she was basically raised by them and so she thinks of herself as fully Native American even though she's like this blonde haired blue-eyed girl. So they have gotten her back and are trying to get her back to her family but they know that as black men traveling with a little white girl it's going to be a dangerous situation for them. So they convince Captain Jefferson to take her on his journeys and to return her to her home and so you are basically following these characters as they're traveling through Texas. They have to learn how to communicate with each other because the little girl doesn't really know English. You get to see this sort of like bond form between them. It's a really beautiful story. Um, I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars because it's not really like my jam. I think eventually it grew on me a lot especially the relationship that forms between the little girl and Captain Captain Jefferson and Captain Jefferson in general is just like a really fantastic character. I think that because it's a little bit of a shorter book, it's around 200 pages long, I don't think there was enough like development for me. I would have liked a little bit more of that. Everything also felt a little bit simple or like easy, like it all just wraps up really neatly and I wasn't the biggest fan of that. I think that especially if you're someone who likes historical fiction, this would be a great book to pick up. If like me, historical fiction isn't necessarily your jam, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this book. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about in this video is The Patron Saint of Liars by Ann Patchett. This book I did not enjoy. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. So this story takes place in the 1960s and there is this place in, I believe it's Kentucky, called St. Elizabeth's which is a home for unwed mothers. So this is a place where basically if a woman gets pregnant before she's married she just like goes off like she just tells her friends and family she's going to visit a cousin or something along those lines and then has the baby and then the baby is taken and put into adoption and the girl can return home and not have her like reputation completely tarnished and things like that. And so one day this woman named Rose ends up coming to St. Elizabeth's but her story is completely different. She traveled there 
all the way from California and she is not actually a single woman, she's actually married. So you get to see her life before she ends up at St. Elizabeth's and then you get to see her living her life through St. Elizabeth's and everything that happens afterwards. So the biggest pro for this book, in my opinion, is Ann Patrick's writing. She is just a fantastic writer. Like the way that she forms sentences is just fantastic because it's not over the top and it's not super like descriptive necessarily. Like she's not super wordy, but her writing really captures your attention. I would say the main problem I had with this book is that you don't really get into Rose's head at all. This book is broken up into a couple of different sections and one of the main sections is just completely from Rose's point of view or mainly following Rose as a character and I couldn't understand any of the decisions that she's making. My whole thing is that I have no problem with unlikable characters or un unlikable women or anything like that but there is this wall that Rose puts up between herself and everyone else in the story and I feel like that wall was also there between Rose and the reader and so it's very difficult to connect to the story at all. There's also some of events that happen later on in the story that I wasn't really happy about at all how they transpired but obviously I'm not going to talk about that because spoilers. There's also this way that the men in this story talk about Rose that I really hated because they keep talking about how much they love her but I'm also just like none of you actually know her <laughs> but I mean that's just sort of a side note as well. So I feel like there's some merit to this book because one I did finish it like usually if I'm not enjoying a book I DNF it um, but this one was compelling enough that I wanted to know what would happen in the end but I didn't find the end satisfying enough to give it like three stars. So it's definitely a two star book for me. I don't think I can highly recommend it but if you're someone who like me wants to go through like all of Ann Patchett's work then yeah it, you're not gonna like hate yourself for reading this but I just wasn't completely satisfied by it. Um, I know that there are people out here who really enjoyed this book or at least like like this book so I definitely would love to talk to you about it down in the comments below. But yeah I just feel like it was all very surface level and it didn't go deep enough for me and I feel like I never really got to know a lot of these characters very well and the characters you do get to know very well aren't the main characters and so I kind of preferred that it was all just told from their storyline or all told from their point of view and we got to just go deeper with all of those people. Yeah it just it didn't vibe with me at all which is a disappointment but that's okay not everything that an author writes will work perfectly. So yeah that's everything I'm going to talk about in this video. In the next video I'm going to talk about everything I read for 24 and 48 as well as for Diversathon and then anything else I might finish after that point. There are at least four books I'm going to have to talk about in that video as well. Possibly more depending on how this weekend goes. So yeah that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. <laughs>